my name's Georgie Sweet and I am an assistant science leader on this year's Peruvian Amazon expedition. Um, the science this year has been really varied, so we're so lucky that the leadership team in general has a wide variety of skills, um, which has meant we've been quite diverse in the science projects that we've chosen. Um, so the chief scientist Alice has done a, quite a lot of ants, um, so that's the basis of hers. Um, Sarah's interest is tapirs, um, so we've been, been doing some tracking. And then Heidi did some things on jaguars, so there was a lot of camera trapping. Um, and then I've been doing some herpetological transects, um, which included going to the wetlands, um, having a search around for frogs, which you can currently hear, there's quite a lot of them. And just in general, uh, recording any incidentals that we find, as well as the human impact. So Rachel's been doing human impact on the environment and how rainforests differ through secondary and primary and just some general meteorological things. Um, there's some things that we've changed, um, but in general it's kind of gone to plan. We've managed to get core samples um, of soil and water samples to test, and lots of those have gone back to the UK, so we'll find out more when we get back. Um, as for the rest of it, apart from the heavy rain which has disrupted some of the ant colonies, um, Alice has done, I think, nearly 12, possibly more now, ant colonies that she's managed to map and we've done some vegetation mapping as well, um, which wasn't necessarily planned. That was a bonus. Um, we've not found as many frogs as we'd liked, but there's still plenty on record. So yeah, in general, it's been really good. Does secondary forest actually have as much wildlife in it um, as a general um, idea that we were looking into? So hopefully we've got some good results from some of it. Um, lots of the tests that the Machu Picchu fire did um, with regards to the soil, um, had no correlation, but there were some positive correlations, so it'll be interesting to see what the final report has to say. Um, lots of people think that once you've cleared a rainforest and then you've got your secondary growth, that you don't get the animals back into it, um, whereas you do, it just takes a long period of time, is what we've seen. Um, so even from last year to this year, um, there's been more woolly monkey sightings around the camp area um, and up to the Olivetti whereas there wasn't last year, they were only up on the ridge, so they are moving down into some of the secondary areas. Um, and hopefully that will continue as well, so that you end up with more species in the future. It just takes a little bit more time. Well, it, hopefully it holds that little bit of hope, because lots of people's argument is, well, we've cleared it and it grows back, so it doesn't really matter, whereas actually it, it obviously does matter. Um, but areas that have been cleared that people don't want to replant, um, it shows that they should because the species eventually will start coming back. Um, so it's, it's really worthwhile. Manu National Park itself is actually one of the most biodiverse places in the world, um, mainly because it, it goes from um, like sea level and like lower elevation right up onto the ridges. So there's quite a few ridges within the National Park area. Um, so because of that, you then get all these different species at the different elevations, um, as well as all the different um, species that are living in the rivers and streams. Yeah, well, as, a, as a child, the Amazon was just one of those places that I thought was amazing. And then through working in wildlife parks and sanctuaries and in zoos, um, I've got this love for like exotic species and specifically primates. Um, so it was for me, it was about coming to a place that I've always wanted to go to and find those animals in their natural habitat um, with a view that potentially in the future we can help conserve them 